Imagine for a moment that the year is 122 AD and you're the new emperor of Rome. Your armies have just taken control of a land that lies over 2,300 kilometers from Rome. Now imagine that you're losing a massive number of troops in this area to heathen barbaric tribes who are quite upset that you've invaded their lands. What would you do? Well, if your name is Hadrian, you build a wall. Not just any wall, a massive wall that would ultimately stretch across the entirety of present-day England. Welcome to today's video where we'll be exploring Hadrian's Wall, why it was built, and what its impacts have been to present-day England. Called Hadrian's Wall for obvious reasons, it is perhaps the most important Roman monument ever built in Britain. For nearly 300 years, Hadrian's Wall was the northwest frontier border of the Roman Empire. Extending 80 Roman miles in length, stretching from Walsund on Tyne in the east to Bonus on Solway in west, it stretched coast to coast across present-day England for roughly three centuries. Built in less than six years by a Roman force of 15,000 men, it is as impressive today for its sheer vision as it is for its engineering and construction. For centuries, Rome had viewed Britain as a mysterious island at the edge of the known world. As early as 55 BC, Caesar and his armies had made efforts to invade Britain and claim her as its own. However, it wasn't until 43 AD, nearly 100 years later, under the command of Emperor Claudius, that 40,000 Roman soldiers invaded and conquered southern Britain, claiming it as another province of the Roman Empire and naming it Britannia. When the Romans arrived in Britain during the first century AD, it was inhabited by many tribes, each ruling a separate region of the island. These tribes, who were unwilling to give up their homes to Roman invaders, continually resisted the Roman invaders throughout the entirety of Rome's nearly 400-year occupation. The tribes of Caledonia, which is modern-day Scotland, were among the most aggressive, noted for their warlike and fearless character. Despite significant military prowess and experience, the Romans were never able to completely vanquish these tribes, and uprisings erupted on a frequent basis. And while the Romans made some gains into Caledonia in the 80s AD, these gains were not secured, and the edge of the Roman Empire was consistently at risk of falling. In 122 AD, however, Emperor Hadrian visited the troubled region of Britannia, and seeing the precarious situation at hand, the decision was made to construct what is now known as Hadrian's Wall. When Hadrian's Wall was constructed in 122 AD, it was built to protect the Romans against the Caledonian barbarians. It also served to divide tribes on both sides. Over time, the absence of connection between Caledonian and Northern English tribes reduced tribal dominance in the region. And while the wall was originally meant to serve as a base to undertake crucial military expeditions into Caledonia, over time, it also became a border to regulate the flow of people and goods, creating a vital point of taxation for the Romans. The wall itself was constructed just north of an already existing line of military installations and was carefully chosen to make the best use of the natural topography in the area. The wall was built of using a mixture of stone block and turf sections, stacked 8 to 10 feet wide and 15 feet tall, with a rampart walk and 6 foot high parapet. There were about 80 mile forts, each about one mile apart, as their name would suggest, each with a kitchen and barracks for a small garrison. Two observation towers were built between each mile fort, resulting in lookouts every third of a mile along the entire length of the wall. In addition to the mile forts, there were 17 larger forts that could each house 500 to 1,000 troops, either infantry or cavalry, or a combination of the two. These forts were erected into the wall, having massive gates on the north face flanked by stone towers. The Romans also built a broad ditch, or vallum, with six-foot-high earthen banks to the south of the wall. 
You may wonder why there would be a ditch to the south of the wall when the real threat was to the north. From the Roman perspective, the threat was actually on both sides. From the north, there were the Cumbrians. From the south, the Brigantes tribe of northern England. By building vallums on both sides, men stationed along the wall could control and monitor traffic in both directions. Another interesting aspect of the wall is the emergence of civilian villages near the large legionary forts to the south of the ditch. In contrast to the standard army forts, these communities, or Vici, sprawled in unplanned disarray. The lasting impact in England from both the Roman occupation and Hadrian's Wall cannot be understated. Along with the construction of the wall would have come the continued Romanization of Britain. Architecture, especially Roman temples, were built as a method to increase knowledge of and interest in Roman gods. Thousands of Roman soldiers, many of whom would have been native to places as far away as Syria and the Netherlands, would have naturally infiltrated the local population over generations by marrying locals and raising their families, bringing along with them their native food, clothes, religions and technology. These cultural markers persist in Britain to the present day. Recent excavations at a mile fortlet located north of Maryport, Cumbria in the early 1990s revealed details about the life of a Roman garrison. The fortlet, which was held briefly during Hadrian's reign, produced artifacts such as game board fragments and a great number of hearths and ovens. The fortlet has subsequently been largely rebuilt and open to the public. Hadrian's Wall was named a UNESCO World Heritage Monument in 1987. While many sections of the wall have been damaged over the years as a result of highways cutting through it and the stealing of its stones to build surrounding houses and other structures, the existing foundations and forts draw tourists from all over the world. The wall, which once stood at the edge of the most powerful empire the world has ever seen, is now mostly in ruins, however, its rich history still remains and persists in Britain to this very day. That brings us to the end of today's video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment below. Also, if you're new to this channel, subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified when we upload more content. We'll see you guys in the next one.